Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you're having a wonderful week like always. Today, I am continuing with my Cindy Lauper discography journey and we have made it to her ninth studio album from 2008 called Bring Ya to the Brink. Now, you guys have been hyping up this album for many a mood. I mean, for months and months and months. Now, one of the reasons why you guys have been hyping up this album is because it's a dance album. It's a dance pop album from Cindy Lauper. It's electronic. I mean, that alone is making me excited. But I am a little disappointed and sad because this is the last Cyndi Lauper album of original material. It's been, I mean, it's been 13 years since this album came out and she has yet to put out another album after this of original songs. But you know what, we're gonna have some fun in today's video and I am looking at the track list and there are 12 songs. The album is 50 minutes and I don't recall hearing any of these songs before. But anyway, enough talking, let's get into it with track number one, High and Mighty. <laughs> Alrighty, that was track number one, uh, High and Mighty. Wow, that chorus, it gets stuck in your head. It really does. And I liked it. It's so different from the rest of her discography. And that's one of the reasons why I like it so much. Not only is it more electronic, but it's also so different from the rest of all her other albums. I did like the track, but I would love to hear a remix of the song. How do you see yourself inside your mind? Do you ever catch yourself step out of time? If I had a dollar every time I tried, I'd be living a high and mighty. I'm gonna be honest with you, I... <laughs> I don't really care about the lyrics in this song. I was just so into the production and the beat. I wasn't really paying attention to what she was singing about. Other than High and Mighty. That's all I was hearing, High and Mighty. I don't really know what she's singing about even when I do read the lyrics. I keep a coat rack by my bed, up against your closet and next to my head. Didn't mean to trap your clothes. Keep the door blocked closed so you can't get in, I can't get out, sink into my pillows and dream what it's about to be living high and mighty. All I'm gonna say is she's singing about being high and mighty and that's all I really care about. But regardless, I did enjoy the song and I would listen to it again. I really wanted a remix of this track though. But anyway, let's move on to track number two, Into the Nightlife. <laughs> And that was track number two, Into the Nightlife. And 
This was, this was great. I liked this song even more than track number one, High and Mighty. Into the Nightlife, indeed. I don't know the last time I've been to the club. It's been a very long time, 2019 maybe. Thank you, Miss Coronavirus. Um, but this was reminding me of, I don't know, just dancing frivolously at a club. And I liked it. This is another song where I don't really care what she's singing about. I don't really care about the lyrics. I just love the production and the beat. It just gets my body moving, and that's what I love. Into the nightlife, want to dress for you tonight under the light. Shot up like a satellite into the night. Shake your money maker, I would never be a faker now. She also says, shirtless wonders wreck my sight under the light. Now this was released as the third single from the album, which I'm really happy about. Cindy Lauper said the song title was inspired by Henry Miller's book, into the nightlife that inspired um, Lawrence Furling Hitties, A Cody Island of the Mind, which inspired her to describe the images of nightlife in New York City. And you know what? I'm gonna say it. Cindy should have put out an album like this a long time ago, as far back as the 90s, a dance pop electronic album. And I'm surprised she didn't, considering Quite a bit of her fan base are gay men. But anyway, let's move on to track number three, Rocky the Chair. And that was track number three, Rocky the Chair. This was a very interesting song, and I ended up really enjoying it. I didn't know what to make of it initially in the first minute or so, but by the halfway point towards the end, it really did grow on me, and I really liked it. It does have a catchy chorus and melody, and the production was very interesting. Also, you could hear um, what sounded like tribal noises in the background. All she ever wanted when the day turned indigo was to leave her grubby life behind her to the buzzing streets below. Now the fate of Faye Delroy is written in the dust. On my rocking chair, rock me tender in the night air, rock me back and make me there. I do want to kind of decipher the lyrics even further, but honestly, I don't really feel like it. This is one of those albums where... Um, I feel like the lyrics don't matter as much. It's the production and the beats and this album just makes you want to dance into the night and you're not supposed to analyze the lyrics, I feel like. So let's move on to track number four, Echo. Yeah. 
and that was track number four, Echo, and I love, 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 I love this song. Um, it is one of my favorites on the album so far, and it's just so euphoric and dreamy. It puts you in a trance. I don't care what she's singing about once again. All of my days, all of my life, standing by you. When you're on the top, notice what you've got. I will be your frail when you're on the trail. You go, go, go. I go, go, go. Everything you know, everywhere you go. Echo, echo, home, home. I am curious to know if this was one of the singles from the album, and it wasn't. I'm sad. <laughs> so we are going to move on to track number five. Life. It took a second there. And that was track number five, Life. Okay. Um, Cindy goes a little R&B on this track. And I don't know how I feel about it. Um, it is probably my least favorite song on the album. I can appreciate the song. I really can, but... I don't know, I couldn't really get into it. Life, it can shake ya, it can make ya, it can bring ya to the brink of life. The struggle hard and deep of what I learned to keep along the way every day. Little one, I take your hand and wonder how I'm gonna help ya be a man and how I'll help ya understand. So essentially, she's singing about how life can shake ya, it can discourage you, it can bring ya to the brink. I do feel like out of the first five songs on the album, the lyrics on this track are the most in-depth. And there is something quite retro about this song. It sounds like a track that could have been released back in the early to mid-90s, perhaps. I don't know. To me, though, I didn't find it particularly interesting. Maybe I have to listen to the track again, but I don't really see myself going back to this song. So we are going to move on to track number six, Same Old Story. <laughs> And that was track number six, Same Old Story. And this was another enjoyable song to listen to. It's catchy as hell. It gets stuck in your head. I love the beat. Um, it's very disco inspired. It was reminding me of 
Grace Jones. Well, it's the same old fucking story with your two different sets of rules. One for me, two for you. I have found it's the same old fucking story all around. And then she goes on to say, much to everyone's surprise, after everything you put me through, friends tell me you've been around, a big fish in a big old town, gobble up all in one fell swoop. So she doesn't sound very happy in this song lyrically. She's kind of lashing out by saying it's the same old fucking story, so on and so forth. It just sounds like she's completely over this person. People slip in in the rain, I watch them get up again. It makes me feel like I can too. And this is something she's sung about many times on her prior albums. Facing adversity and getting, I don't know, fucked over and falling down, getting back up. And I always felt like through Cindy's discography, through the 90s and even 2000s decade, there always seemed to be a thread of anger and somberness and even bitterness through some of her lyrics. I guess what I'm trying to say is there weren't many times through the 90s and 2000s where she sounded genuinely happy. There were times, of course, through a lot of her songs, but a lot of her songs, she just sounded quite sad and angry. But overall, when it comes to track number six, Same Old Story, I really did enjoy it and I would listen to it again. So let's move on to track number six, or seven, I should say, Raging Storm. Actually, before we move on to Raging Storm, it does say here that Sable's Story was released as the second single from the album, which I am happy about. And the song also reached number one on the US Billboard Hot Dance Club Play songs. So now let's move on to track number seven, Raging Storm. <laughs> And that was track number seven, Raging the Storm. Another great song that I enjoyed. And what I've enjoyed about this album so far is it still sounds like a Cyndi Lauper album. But she didn't sell out by putting out a dance pop electronic album. Yes, it's a dance pop album, but it still sounds like a Cyndi Lauper album. And that was my worry going into this album, thinking that she would have just completely commercialized this album, which she really didn't do. It still keeps the integrity and soul of Cyndi Lauper, especially when it comes to the lyrics. There's a raging storm and a troubled sea, but you better not do a bad show on MTV. And then she also says, these are darker times for me, behind smoke and mirrors, amputees, it's a different world. Now I see the deflowering of the birds and bees. So I do feel like this is probably one of the darker songs on the album. And she's also standing up for herself in the song. You can fool some people, 
but you can't fool me. So you're not gonna take advantage of her anymore. You can't fool her. You can't blindside her. And this is something she's touched on before in some of her other albums. So let's move on to track number eight, Lay Me Down. An empty street. And that was track number eight, Lay Me Down. And I do want to say that this album is very consistent. All the songs sound beautiful together from one to the next, with the exception of track number five, Life. I don't know, maybe I have to listen to that song again. But I feel like Life just doesn't fit in with the overall aesthetic of the album. I don't know if I'm the only one. And when it comes to this track, track number eight, Lay Me Down, I did like it, but I didn't love it. I don't think it's one of the stronger songs on the album. I do like the lyrics though. An empty street, a quiet smile without steady feet. You know the reckless kind keep coming, coming back to the same old place with that wild-eyed stare up in your face. Lay me down in a big old town. This is another song where you don't really listen to it for the lyrics, you listen to it for the beat and the production, which was really nice. So we are gonna move on to track number nine, Give It Up. And that was track number nine, Give It Up, and a great song. I like this track. I feel like this might be one of the catchier songs on the album when it comes to the hook and melody, and it's a lot of fun. There is something quite retro sounding about this entire album. Wash the week out of my mind, slap my face on, now I feel sublime. Put some sounds on, to unwind, caught the moment, just about the right time. I've got to get back to the floor, just grab my keys and pop the door. I don't really have much to say about this song other than it's, it's a fun time and I liked it. So we are going to move on to track number 10, Set Your Heart. And 
that was track number 10, Set Your Heart, and Studio 54 Central. Yas. Even Carly Minogue herself is seething that she herself didn't record this song. It's a lot of fun and I loved it. When your heart is beating black and blue and a cold world's looking back at you, when you're fading low around the bed, go on, turn around, you'll see me. I will always be your friend. Set your heart free. You know what? I'm gonna say it. This might be one of my favorite tracks from the album, and I might be overreacting. I don't know. I don't care. I love it. So we are gonna move on to track number 11, Grab a Hold. And that was track number 11, Grab a Hold. Cindy is going out with a bang with this album. She is saving some of the best songs for last, in my opinion. I loved the last two tracks, uh, Set Your Heart and Grab a Hold. And um, infectious songs, really catchy and... I don't know if you could tell, you could tell, I enjoyed myself. Going to make a confession, going to hope that you listen, I'm not a story you've read about, I'm just what I am, and when you open your eyes up, in the morning you rise up, wash yesterday from your face, and make a new plan. If you want to grab a hold, let it go. I love the lyrics of this song. And once again, I am struggling with interpreting some of these songs because I'm not really interested in digging into the lyrics. I just love the production. I just want to dance. Who cares about the lyrics? I just want to dance. So we have come to the end of the album, track number 12, Raid On Me. And that was the final track of the album, track number 12, Rain On Me. And this is a beautiful song. The melody and the lyrics, her voice. Um, my only gripe with the song is I wish the song production-wise would have progressed into full-blown electronic dance towards the end of the song, the last minute or so. I was kind of expecting that to happen. It was kind of building up there for a second. I thought it would just kind of just blow up into some, you know, electronic dance moment. But it never happened. And I was a little disappointed by that. I think if that happened, I would have absolutely loved the song. And I do like the song. Um, I just, I don't 
love it as much as I probably could have. I saw you gather all your hope with all your dreams. I waved just like a shooting star that once had waved to me. I am a lover in midair. I think about it. I don't care. Into the fire of despair, just like a train that goes nowhere. But you can rain on me. So this is a little bit of a gloomy song, just like some of the other tracks on the album. And I'm coming to realize that's kind of Cindy's aesthetic lyrically. I mean, she does have some sad, gloomy, somber songs. But even though her songs can be a bit gloomy and even at times resentful and bitter and sad, there's also something very optimistic about the songs at the same time. Like you're in a dark tunnel and there's a light at the very end that you're running towards. And even though you're going through hardships and struggles right now and people might have fucked you over, there's still a sense of tomorrow is another day and it will get better. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe it won't get better and uh, you just have to deal with the shit that's in your life and you just have to accept the fact that the way your life is now, that's how it's gonna be for perhaps the rest of your life. And perhaps there will always be a gloomy, dark cloud following you. So it's just one of those things where you just have to live with it. So that was all 12 tracks of Bring It To The Brink by Cyndi Lauper. And I really, really, really enjoy myself. Electronic and dance pop, disco, and... It still sounds like a Cyndi Lauper album. She hasn't put out an album like this before, and I'm a little surprised that she didn't. This is, um, much overdue. I mean, this album, the sound of this album, this is something she should have put out in the 90s. Um, and it's great. I loved the overall production of the album. It's very consistent production-wise, and the lyrics are traditional Cyndi Lauper lyrics. And what I also like is, I said this before already, but this album still keeps the integrity of who Cyndi Lauper is. She didn't sell out and she didn't go all commercial. This is still a Cyndi Lauper album. Is it the most memorable and mind-blowing dance pop album I've ever listened to? No, but when it comes to Cyndi Lauper and her music, this is a great effort, and I would definitely listen to a lot of these songs again. There are some serious bangers and memorable songs, the hooks and melodies, and from beginning to end, I really enjoyed this album. There were a couple misses on the album, just like any album I listened to, but the highs definitely outweigh the couple lows on the album, which weren't even lows, they just were very memorable. They were still good songs, they just didn't really grab me, but overall, a good chunk of the album I really enjoyed. Now this album did receive a Grammy Award nomination for Best Dance Electronica Album in 2009. What I also like about the album is that she didn't go crazy with the electronic production. She definitely could have taken it a bit further with the production, but I'm glad she didn't because that wouldn't be Cyndi Lauper. I mean, this, like I said already, this album still keeps the integrity of who she is production-wise, even though it's an electronic dance pop album. So what did you guys think of the album? What are your impressions? Maybe... You love the album, maybe you think it's okay, it's not one of your favorite Cyndi Lauper albums, tell me why. And I'm sad because this is her last album of original material, and it's been 13 years. I'm really hoping she puts out a new album with brand new material. I mean, if she puts out another album of covers, I'm gonna be very disappointed. So in my next Cyndi Lauper video, we will be moving on to her 2010 album, her 10th studio album called Memphis Blues. So until then, thanks for watching, guys. You can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Twitter, you can message me, you can say, hey, how are you? And I will see you next time. Take care.